Okay, so in this module we're going to crank up the complexity just a little bit, not too much, but enough to tickle your brain a bit. So let's go into the next command, and the next command in our helper.js file is the background command. Essentially what this does is it just draws a rectangle over the entire width and height of, it draws a rectangle over the entire canvas. Um, it's kind of a way of just clearing out the screen and drawing over top of everything. Um, now we gotta be careful the way we use this. So if I go into our main.js and I call right below here, I say background. Well, let's pause for a second. What do we need for parameters? Going back to helper.js, I can see that it requires a red, a green, and a blue. What this really is, is just RGB values. It's, it's um, a way to designate what color we want. Think of it like painting. We blend the colors to produce whatever color it is we want. Um, so for example, if I want an all blue rectangle, then I would just say zero for red, zero for green, and then some number between zero and 255 for blue. And 255 will give me its maximum intensity. So let's make it a pure blue uh, background. So let's go back to our main.js. So I need zero red, sorry, yes. And then we want blue, so uh, zero green. And then we want finally our blue, and we're gonna have a maximum intensity, which is 255. And we're gonna save this, and we're gonna go back over here, we're gonna run it, and it's all blue. Uh-oh, where did all the other stuff go that we drew? Well, it's behind it. So we gotta be careful about where we actually draw this. So in our draw command, I can see that the background is drawn after the other elements. Remember, our programs run from t our programs run from top to bottom, which means the background was drawn essentially over top. Think of it like looking down on um, looking down on a deck of cards. I can't see the cards underneath the top card, so it's always drawn in a stackable order. So in this case, I'm going to move the background, and I'm going to put it first. Now when I save, and I go back and I run it, we actually get all this. But the difference here is that filled rectangle is now gone. It's not really gone. It's actually still there. You just can't see it because it's actually the same color as the background. It's also blue now. So we're going to fix that tomorrow in tomorrow's lessons where we can actually change the color of our filling. Um, but for now, know that it is still there. It's just invisible because it's the exact same color as the background. So for now, I'm just going to kind of comment out the background just so we don't um, confuse with anything else. So that's the background uh, functionality. The next functionality we're going to do is the ability to draw an ellipse. An ellipse is just an oval. Um, it could be a perfect it could be a perfect circle or it could be wider than it is tall or taller than it is wide. That's really up to us to decide. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail in the ellipse code, um, but essentially it just draws. If we were to go back over to here, um, if we were to draw an ellipse, what it does, I need to specify a few different things. I need to specify a point. This point represents a center of a circle or an ellipse in this case and everything else is drawn from that point so what I'm also gonna have to specify is I'm gonna have to specify an X radius and I'm gonna have to specify a Y radius this allows me to of course get uh, different sizes and different shapes of my ellipse so going back into Sublime and coming back over into um, uh, into the helper.js file, we see the CX, which represents the center of X, the CY, which is a center, the center Y, the X radius and Y radius, which represent the two radii, radii, and one last one that represents angle. We're just going to ignore this one for right now. Um, uh, just we're, we're just going to use it for some other purpose in a second. But for now, uh, we're just going to put in a value zero for it. So let's go back over to our main.js and let's draw an ellipse. Ellipse. Now I need to specify my center points. Well, let's throw it right dead center of the screen. So my, I know my screen's 800 by 400, so that would be 400 pixels over and 200 pixels down. 
and now I need to specify my x radius and y radius. Well, let's make it a wide one. So let's say it has a radius of 100, which means it has a diameter of 200. And let's give it a, um, a y radius of 30. Now I'm just going to give a 0 for that last angle value for now. And we'll come back to that in just one second. So now if we rerun this, we see our oval which should be centered in the screen, but it doesn't look like it is um, for some reason. X and Y, oh, because that is, should be 300, 800 by 600. Go back into our project again, just verify, and that looks much more centered. Now, let's talk about that last parameter that we kind of ignored and we just put a zero for. Essentially what it is, it's an angle of rotation it allows us to rotate our ellipse. Now, what, rotate, what I mean by rotate, I mean it'll spin on that center point. Right? Almost like, a, almost like a, um, one of those wind wheels you put in your front yard or whatnot. So if we go back and change this, pardon me, back into main.js and change that angle. So if we put it at say, let's say mm, 45 degrees, we should get an eighth of a turn, we come back, and we get our rotation. And it should still have a radius, a radius in the x direction of 100 and a y radius of 30, which allows us to do some pretty cool things. Uh, depending on what you're doing, you might add some rotation and some spinning effects into any games or whatnot, depending on what you're doing. The last functionality that I wanted to show you was the ability to actually fill in that rotatable oval. And just like we did for the fill rect, it's the exact same code. The only thing we have to do is change the call. So instead of just ellipse, we're going to have fill ellipse. And here we go. And now let's move it. Let's say let's move it down to 500 so we can see it move away. And come back. And there we go. We have our filled objects. And that is all the basic drawing commands that we are going to deal with for now. And in the next module, in the next set of modules, we're going to go into some much more detailed things and allow us to uh, manipulate our graphics in a lot better ways. Thanks for watching.